Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 560, Belly Fat, Is It Forever? How to Get Your Flat Belly Back with Lifestyle and Exercise Changes. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating the symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin and Brett Newcomb are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, a book that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to talk about belly fat again. We're going to go over the things that you can do to help decrease your belly fat by changing your diet and also by exercising your abdominal muscles. Now when my patients come in and tell me that they have belly fat and that they want to get rid of it, I ask them about the different kinds of exercise they do. Now. Most of them do not do any abdominal exercises. If, if you're thinking about like a class that would do abdominal exercises, that would be um, hot yoga or uh, Pilates. If you're, but most people run, get on an elliptical or uh, a bicycle, or they walk, but they don't do, and they may even lift weights, but they don't do any specific abdominal exercises. So. In reality, you can get the hormones you need, the medication you need, you can eat right and never lose your belly fat or your, or your large belly, let me rephrase that, unless you strengthen the muscles and pull in and not let them push out. So if muscles that are not strong are just kind of lax and they just kind of fall forward. You have two problems there. One is it doesn't look good and it looks like you have a lot of fat there, even if you may not. And the second part is your lower back is going to be damaged over time if you don't hold your belly in. Now, those of you who went to ballet class like I did for years and years and years and had a teacher with a little cane that would tap your belly when your belly wasn't tucked in, naturally keep their belly held in at all times because we learned it early and it's hard to even just not hold your belly in. But you still have to do the exercises that strengthen those muscles to keep your belly in and if you want to make it even more successful, hold your belly in anytime you're walking or sitting upright, and then just practice holding your belly in because that strengthens your muscles as well. So the older you get, the harder it is to lose the fat under, under your muscles and on top of your muscles. We discussed that last week uh, in our HealthCast 559. So if you want to go back to that to help you refresh, then that would be um, a good idea. Uh, what I want to um, discuss right now is your diet. And this is something, it is not a diet, is it is your diet. And if you go to my book, The Secret Female Hormone, in the back, in the appendix, we have the your diet or the food you should include and exclude by blood type, which is genetically you should exclude or include, and that will help you lose weight faster. And we also have Dr. Maupin's low-carb diet, which is very simple, and it is basically not limiting calories but just limiting carbs. But interestingly enough, if you don't eat carbs or a lot of carbs, other than fruit carbs and vegetable carbs, you can't eat a lot of volume of food because it basically doesn't cause you to eat more. All carbs, when you eat them, make you eat more. Now, I'm talking about carbs that are basically from um, wheat, flour, uh, sugar, any agave, any honey, anything that has sugar or concentrated carbs in it, then those are the carbs I'm talking about. The carbs that are in vegetables and fruit are in general not going to stimulate your insulin and not going to make you gain weight. So in my diet, I don't limit fruit and vegetables. Fruit and vegetables are actually encouraged, and you can have as many fruit and vegetables as you want, except bananas and white potatoes. Those two have to be counted as carbs. And I have my patients eat six times a day, and I have them eat 25 grams of carb 
or less at each feeding. Now, when you add that up, that's pretty good. But scientifically, the 25 grams is the exact amount, the top of the, uh, the number of carbs of, of the type I discussed, sugar, flour, uh, other, other kinds of grains, that you can eat without overstimulating your insulin. If we all did this, we wouldn't have diabetes and we wouldn't have insulin resistance or obesity. So in, my, in, in this diet, you just don't eat anything past 25 grams per meal. It's easy if you drink a shake for one of your meals. It's easy if you eat nuts for one of your snacks. But you can't eat a carb without a protein, and you should center on proteins. So you can eat meat, cheese, eggs, any of those things to be really concentrated protein, or you can eat um, ultra-filtered um, whey, which is even okay for people like me who have lactose intolerance. So whey is a milk product, but it doesn't have the lactose in it, and you don't feel the same as you do when you have a milk product. So I would suggest uh, P-H-O-R-M, um, meal replacement, which is called level one. They have great flavors. And you can get 25 grams of protein in each scoop. And you should have one of those before and one after you exercise. So what does it take um, to have the proper diet? That's part of it. Another part is that nobody gets enough of their vitamins these days. You should take extra vitamin D, especially if you have dark skin. The darker your skin, the less you get from the sun. So over the summer, if you were light at the beginning, you got a lot of D. If you get a tan, you get less and less and less D from the sun. So even if you're outside, you're going to need vitamin D. And 5,000 units a day is what's recommended. That's required for everybody, but it's also required to lose weight. Another um, supplement that we don't have enough of, at least in the Midwest, unless you live on the coast, you probably don't have enough in your food or water, is iodine. Iodorol is the uh, medica or the supplement that we use. One iodorol a day or half an iodorol a day should usually give you enough iodine for you to keep your thyroid healthy and keep it working. And you know, your thyroid has to be healthy for you to lose weight because if it's not working, your cells aren't burning energy. They're just not making energy. They're not burning calories. So thyroid is pivotal, and having it optimal is very important. So the iodine will help that. Um, there is a belief that people with autoimmune thyroid disorder shouldn't take iodine. Well, that's just only if your thyroid is hyper, not hypo or low. If it's hyper, I would not take the iodine. If it's hypo, you should take the iodine because that will help make it more normal. Uh, I usually suggest magnesium and zinc every day. Magnesium, if you're doing glycinate, 200 to, to 400 a day. If you're doing, if you're taking um, zinc, 15 milligrams a day, uh, micrograms per day. Uh, and that's because your muscles use up magnesium and they use up zinc. And it's important for you to feed your, your muscles because they're burning your calories. I mean, that's the biggest organ that burns calories. Not your brain, not your gut, not your heart, but your muscles. Well, your heart's a muscle. Um, I also suggest something called dim diindol methane. It's made from uh, cauliflower and broccoli. Um, it is usually, if you get the double strength, usually you, you get 200 milligrams to 400 milligrams a day. That actually decreases the hormone estrone that actually helps make belly fat. So that's one of those supplements that you can take to help reduce the belly fat directly, and not just make you healthier. Um, feed your muscle protein, okay? So red meat, turkey, chicken, for most of us is not bad. And even if you have high cholesterol, that's not what your cholesterol comes from. Every kind of food becomes cholesterol in your liver. So it has to do with what your liver is doing, not necessarily what you're eating. So you should be eating protein. And animal protein is what muscles are made out of. We want to optimize our muscles, and the muscles especially in our abdomen. So we want to feed them the right pieces of protein so that they can actually grow. So here's how a muscle grows. When you exercise, your, um, your muscle actually breaks down and swells a little bit with fluid, with water, but it breaks down, and the following day it builds back up. 
So it has to have that food. It can't use what it just broke down. That goes out of your body. It can't recycle. So you have to provide it with food so that you can make new muscle. It's a really interesting process, but that's why trainers tell you to work out with weights either every other day or work out the top part of your body one day and the bottom part of your body the, the next day because it, they don't want you to over-exercise your muscle or they get smaller. They can't grow back. And, they, and that would be bad for burning calories. So the more muscle you have, the more calories you burn. Um, if we're looking at numbers of grams of protein that you need to just sustain your muscle mass or maybe slightly increase it, you need about half of your body weight in grams of protein a day. So uh, that would be if you were 200 pounds, you would need 100 grams of protein a day just to sustain your muscles. If you want to grow your muscles, then you, you need almost as many grams of protein as your weight. So that would be 200 grams to make your muscles bigger. So most of us don't need that much, but you can keep track of your food and, and tally it up. It's hard to, it's, it's even hard to get 100 grams. So the protein that I use is called Form Level 1, P-H-O-R-M Level 1, and it's ultra-filtered whey, and it has 25 grams in each scoop. So a scoop before you work out, a scoop after you work out will help sustain your muscles. That's half of, um, that's more than half of what I need in a day. So that's something that you can actually add to your diet. It tastes really good too. Um, eating ar or taking arginine, that's a particular protein, uh, actually amino acid that helps build muscle. And it also helps with sex drive. Um, the volume of the ejaculate, the response with orgasm, all of those things. So it has a, a twofer. Um, and in everything, look for soy. If you're not Asian, you probably don't do well with soy. Soy causes Caucasians to make estrone, the old lady, old man estrogen. And that's something that you need to avoid because that's going to make your belly fat worse. And a lot of things that say they're phytoestrogens, they're like supplements for menopausal women, don't take those because that's just going to give you belly fat and larger breasts. So those are things that don't help you, so avoid those. You should do aerobic exercise every day while you're trying to lose your belly fat, and it can be whole body exercise. But you should exercise your abdominals at least every other day, and every day would even be better because the exercise I'm going to show you aren't going to augment the muscles and make them really big, they're just going to make them tighter. So that's, that's important. So you do have to exercise your abdominal muscles daily. Next, I'm going to show you the exercises that I suggest. But first, I want to show you a picture of the muscles that you'll be working out. When I work out, I think about the muscles I'm trying to make stronger. So you have to use your mind and your body. So your rectus muscles... These muscles are attached at your breastbone and at your pubic bone, and they go up and down on either side of your belly button. They're attached to your rib cage, and they um, pull your, your whole abdomen in this way when you make them stronger. They're, ca they're called the six-pack, basically. Six-pack just means that they kind of contract and look like six different lumps, which I don't find to be attractive on women. But for men, they... Love that. So um, that's up to you whether you want to work on that. The external obliques are the, they go um, basically um, at an angle. And it's kind of like, it's kind of like making a girdle. They hold you in a, in a different fashion. And they, um, they hook up basically to the center and go sideways. And those are on the outside. And then you have another set of those on the inside at the back of your uh, rectus muscles. The last set of muscles are the transverse abdominis, and they sit behind the obliques, and they help stabilize. It's like a girdle. They help stabilize everything. Under that is fascia, which is the tight connective tissue that holds, us, holds our abdomen in. Now, people who have hernias, which are they, their rectus muscle can actually separate 
and they can get lumps in here. And that makes it really hard to get a flat belly without having surgery and having those muscles put back together. But you can at least get somewhat where you don't have that hernia, a flatter belly, and you can still do the exercises. So um, all of these muscles, just think what they do. They make you twist, they make you reach, they make you crunch. Uh, all of those kinds of activities are what we're going to be um, we're going to be exercising. Well, I'll explain the exercises as I show you what to do. Most of them have to be repeated three times uh, to strengthen your abs, and um, usually there's 30 seconds or so for each action. So 30 seconds three times, it's not bad. So please stay with me, and I'll show you the exercises that you need to do. These exercises should be done in order and should be repeated three times. The first exercise is the plank. Get on your hands and knees, put your elbows on the ground, directly below your shoulders. Step your feet backwards until your body is parallel to the floor, like a plank. Tighten your core, your abs, your back, anything that you can feel around the middle, and hold for 45 seconds. Rest for 15 seconds and repeat two more times. Number two, the side plank. Begin in a plank position. Place your right elbow directly beneath the middle of your chest facing forward. Then lift your left hand to your waist and place your left foot on top of your right so your left leg is stacked on top of your right. Lift your left arm to the sky. Please hold this for 45 seconds, then rest for 15 and repeat two more times. Then switch to the other side. Dead bug. Number three. Lie on your back with your arms extended, reaching straight for, from your shoulders to the sky. Bend and raise your knees so they form a 90 degree angle. Shin should be parallel to the floor. Squeeze your abs and press your lower back into the floor. Hold this position for as long as possible for up to 45 seconds. Rest for 15 seconds and repeat two more times. Number four, the bicycle. Sit on the floor with your arms supporting you behind you and your knees bent. You will be a V-shape. Bring your right elbow toward your left knee, keeping your chest open and extending your right leg out. Repeat on opposite side with left elbow coming to right knee. Do as many reps as possible while maintaining your proper form. Number five, the hip twist. Forearms are resting on the ground supporting your body and hips are slightly elevated in a pike position. Drop the left hip to the floor, twisting at the waist. Return to pike hip position, then drop the right hip to the floor. Continue alternating to do as many reps as possible, up to 18. The last exercise is the lateral high knee. This is an aerobic kind of exercise. Stand with your feet directly under your shoulders. Bring your left knee towards your chest and your right palm to your ear in a runner's stance. Quickly switch your arm and leg as if you were jogging and move a step to the left. Continue alternating for three steps. That's one set. Move back to the, oppo the opposite way for three steps. That's a second step. Do 12 sets total. Ideally, you'll need to lose belly fat by using diet and exercise. And if you can do aerobic exercise for total body fat loss, that would be awesome. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.